Well, every year, the Royal Astronomical Society has what it calls its out-of-town meeting. And this is held in various centres over the British Isles, away from London. And this year, it happened to be the turn of Dublin, because the RAS has not met in Dublin now for a number of years. And uh, since we were in Dublin, the obvious place to visit was Burr Castle, which, after all, is really the cradle of modern-type astronomy. How significant is Burr Castle in terms of astronomical history? It's remarkably significant, and this is one of the most extraordinary telescopes ever built. It was completed by the third Earl of Ross way back in 1845. Up to that time, the world's most powerful telescope had been built by an astronomer named Herschel. Lord Ross decided to do better, and he built this telescope, which had a mirror 72 inches in diameter, far larger than anything built before and far more powerful. And he used it very well. He turned it toward the sky, and he looked particularly at the faint fuzzy objects that they called nebulae, and he discovered that some of these were in fact great spirals, and we now know that these were external systems so far away that their light takes millions of years to reach us, and for a long time this was the only telescope in the world which was capable of showing these spiral forms. And if you were to compare it to somewhere today, where would that be? It was still ranking the first few, but we can't claim that this telescope was the equivalent of a modern one because it wasn't. And in particular, Lord Ross was a very wise man. He accepted limitations. Don't forget, we're going back now to 1845, and in those days, engineering was still fairly rudimentary. And if Lord Ross had tried to make a telescope which could swing all over the sky, he would have failed. So he accepted limitations. And as you can see, there are two large stone walls here, and the telescope is slung between them, so it can only see one strip of the sky more or less in the south, and that's the only part of the sky it can examine, so you have to wait until the Earth's rotation brings your object into view. That was a very severe limitation, and if Lord Ross had not accepted that, he would have failed. As he did accept it, he succeeded. To mark the Royal Astronomical Society's visit to Ireland, Armagh Planetarium sent a special team to Burr, and they're not just selling books. They've also brought a portable planetarium, where, for the next three weeks, schoolchildren round Offaly can take a simulated Star Trek. But has the amateur a place in astronomy today? Yes, we have some lay people, and they're very interested and interesting, and occasionally we have papers from them. And it's surprising how, even now, the amateurs, lay people, if you like, can still contribute to the subject. It seems to be so technical nowadays, astronomy with spaceships going up, that there's not much room for the amateur in his back garden with a telescope, is there? There's still some scope. I mean, for example, in, uh, in cometary uh, science, cometary astronomy, looking for comets and uh, looking for meteors, meteor streams, this sort of thing. No, the astronomer can still do uh, quite a bit. In fact, it's not long since we had an amateur come to the Royal Astronomical Society, to one of our meetings, a man called Panther, to describe a comet that he had discovered. And incredibly, he discovered it uh, on Christmas Day, when uh, everyone else was uh, busy eating Christmas dinner. There he was uh, looking at the sky. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Not all the instruments used at Burr over the years have been salvaged, but there's a small selection of the most interesting bits and pieces invented or used here by the Earls of Ross in the 19th century. Well, this was used by the fourth Earl of Ross, the second of the great astronomers, and his main contribution to science was in measuring the tiny quantity of heat sent to us from the moon. And he used this device to do it, which he invented himself. And by 1890, he had the answer right. It was a long time before anyone confirmed it and showed that his results had been absolutely accurate. Do you mean there's a certain heat that comes as it does from the sun? It does indeed. Actually. A very tiny amount of heat from the moon, which of course is reflected solar heat, and that was collected by the fourth Earl with this device, measured, and as I say, he got the answer correct. How do they use this instrument to measure the moon's heat? There's only a tiny quantity of heat coming from the moon, so what you do is to collect it by means of that curved mirror, focus it here, and then record it by a special recording device. And the third Earl did that, and he got the results correct. And in view of the tiny amount of heat coming from the moon, that really was a pretty staggering achievement way back in 1890. Your family have contributed a great deal to astronomy in the past 150 years. Where do you see your own position in relation to that line? I'm afraid that I'm not an astronomer myself at all. I think that probably the best contribution that we can make is by continuing to preserve the scientific heritage that we're lucky enough to have here and making this increasingly available to the youth of Ireland, students, tourists from abroad, and everyone who's interested in our scientific heritage. We've um, started since I returned to host here, for instance, the annual general meetings and public lectures of the Irish Astronomical Society, and it makes me tremendously happy 
that through this, the link between our family Burr and science and astronomy seems to be preserved, and they are coming back to Burr now each year, seemingly regarding it as their natural home.